Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the online series 11 ladder and provide live commentary as I go. Today we're using a really fun team featuring Bulk Up Leftovers Grim Snarl, so it's offensive with Sucker Punch and Spirit Break, as well as Light Screen for support, and we're using Life Orb Competitive Milotic with Coil, Muddy Water, Icy Wind, and Recover. This was built by Neo VGC, who I've linked in the description below. Uh, he always builds, I think, really consistent and strong teams, and uh, yeah, it's a really interesting team just because it has some pretty unconventional sets. I think like Grimstar and Milotic are not Pokemon you expect to even see kind of offensively very frequently. Uh, and then they're both actually pretty fun Dynamax options with this team as well. And so I think one other fun thing about this team is that like Milotic, Grim, and really everything else are all viable max options. So you actually have five Pokemon that can realistically Dynamax. Uh, and it's all about kind of just judging the board state and figuring out what is the best one given the matchup. So to round out the team, you've got Classic AV Landers, Safety Goggle, Static Zapdos with Eerie Impulse and Roost. This Zapdos is such a good answer, especially into Sun teams. Uh, like, you know, Sun is so common in this format, and this team, I think, is such a good answer against Sun because you have the Safety Goggle Zapdos, you have Dual Intimidate with Landorus and Insin, and then you have Milotic and Grimmsnarl, both which can increase their defenses via Coil and Bulk Up, respectively. Uh, and so with this Zapdos, you know, with Safety Goggles, you don't have to worry about Sleep Powders from Venusaur. You can Eerie Impulse of Max Venusaur to in immediately get its uh, special attack down to minus two. Uh, and then it's also a really strong Max option with Max Airstream and Max Lightning. Those Max Airstreams from Zapdos and Landers are also valuable in boosting Zapdos. Zacian speed. You have to know that the Zacian is very bulky. Uh, it is not max speed. Uh, once again, paste in the description below. So you do have to be a little bit careful when you're going up against other Zacians. That's where having a single max airstream uh, speed boost is really valuable. And then finally, you've got Incineroar. This is pretty classic, but it does have close combat rather than a dark type attack. And part of the reason is because, you know, you've got Sucker Punch on the Grimstone already, uh, so you don't need as much dark type damage. And so close combat's really fun. It, you know, gives you uh, better coverage into certain Pokemon. And in addition, uh, you can even max Incin and then max Knuckle to increase your attack as well as partners like Zacian, for example. So overall, this team has a lot of bulk. Uh, I think it's pretty rare to just pick up big one-hit knockouts, but the thing is that you have good recovery with Recover on Milotic, Roost on Zapdos, Leftovers on Grimmsnarl, uh, and overall, it will be tougher for your opponent to actually get like knockouts onto your side. So yeah, huge thank you to Neil VGC for the team. I've linked his Twitter as well as his YouTube channel down in the description below. To get started, today's episode is sponsored by Into the AM. They're a super awesome apparel company that makes all kinds of different clones, ranging from t-shirts to hoodies to joggers, and their most popular line of clothes is their graphic tees. I've linked some of my favorites from them down in the description below, and this is really the best possible time to look into getting some clothing from them because they're running a really, really big Cyber Monday sale. I would recommend their clothes just regularly even before the sales, but with these sales, some of the prices are incredibly, incredibly cheap, so it's really the best time in the year to potentially look to get some of these uh, shirts. So, like I mentioned, I've linked my favorite products from them down in the description below. There's free shipping past $75, and there is free returns if you decide you don't like the clothing as well so huge thank you to them for continuing to sponsor the channel all right getting into things here and <laughs> is this the um this is the same player from yesterday right i have played this team three times in the last six games and i might literally have been the same player all three times as well someone mentioned yesterday that one of the ot's uh was like sword and then the other was shield which i think is really interesting now, funnily enough, I was actually just playing some practice games with this team, and my opponent in that one had the exact same team, and they led with Reggie Alecki plus Calyrex, and they just Dynamaxed Alecki on turn one, and I did not have very good solutions into it. My best solution would be a Landorus Incineroar lead. Hmm. Landorus Incineroar. It's just Dynamax Alecki gives me so much trouble otherwise. Grimstarl can set up a light screen, so alternatively we can actually consider Grim plus Insin and then Zacian plus Milotic in the back. And if they go with like Trick Room stuff, I can just start like going for bulk ups. I just would love to bring Landorus as a uh, switch it into Alecki. I do think they Dynamax Alecki here is the thing. I just don't know who to give up. But I really want to try out both the Grimstar and the Milotic, so we'll go with this and see what they end up choosing. Um, maxing Grimstar here is actually something to consider as well. But yeah, I feel like I've run into this team specifically. Maybe it's just the same player, but this team definitely for sure so much in the recent week or so. This has, you know, been a pretty dominant archetype, but it's really not like 
nearly as common as some of the other archetypes I've seen, so it's interesting to run into it so much. They actually lead with Incinero and Mimikyu. Wow, okay. Which I feel like would have been pretty risky into um, a Milotic lead, so I'm actually very surprised they went with this, unless they were hard reading me into, you know, covering for Aleki, which may be the case. We have a faster um, Incin here, so I can fake out their Incin turn one. Uh, bulk up is very interesting in this one. Uh, the question is, do I want to fake out? Because if I'm my opponent, I would actually consider just switching out Incineroar into Calyrex immediately. So I'm actually down to Parting Shot it here. Mm, they're staying in, they don't fake out, so I think they're going to go for a Parting Shot of their own, which is interesting. But... Oh. Okay, so Mimikyu goes for Taunt onto Grim. I'm going to Parting Shot them, and this is where things get interesting. If you ended up clicking Parting Shot into my Incineroar, and you activate Competitive, it's a disaster for them. So, yeah, this matchup is tricky because, like, I, I have to cover for the Aleki combination. Um, when I played a warm-up game, I went with, there's Parting Shot, who's it going into? <laughs> Okay, sweet. Um, that works. That certainly works. That's actually so sick. Oh my gosh. So I have a defense boost right now on Grim. I'm taunted, but I can max either Pokemon right now. They could always switch Mimikyu back out into Insane. You could always just max Calyrex. Oh, okay, they actually just bring Amoongus out. That makes sense. Uh, but because Amoongus is in, what we're going to do here, I think, is actually just set up this terrain so that they can't spore me. Because Milotic is in such a crazy good spot right now. So I'm going to max Grimmsnarl. I'm going to Starfall into the Mimikyu slot, and I will go for an Icy Wind here as well. Yeah. This is a very interesting game now. Because if you're my opponent, the Incineroar has to come out at some point, right? Um... I also could have just maxed my Lodic actually and just went for a max Hailstorm onto a Moongus because it would have been a plus three max Hailstorm. Now, max Hailstorm is a little bit weaker, but that would have still been worth going for, honestly. So, in retrospect, I actually think that may have been the stronger play, but that's okay. Um, let's see much how much Icy Wind does here to both. Moongus did not go for a Rage Powder, that makes sense. Oh my gosh, that's so much. Okay, yeah, max Hailstorm is definitely going to pick up the knockout there. <laughs> So yeah, we're probably going to max the Milotic, but I don't mind maxing Grimmsnarl right now either, because, you know, it sets up terrain, which means you can't Spore, uh, and then we can steal massive amounts of damage with Milo in subsequent turns as well. So they'll probably set up a Trick Room this next turn, but that's fine, right? I don't really mind that. Pretty good damage from Starfall. And now I can start clicking Muddy Water with Milotic. Yeah, Amoongus doesn't take... Actually, I wonder if a plus three Muddy Water into a Starfall? That would definitely get the knockout. Um, so there's Spore, yep. And now they're going to Trick Room. I, I think it would have been better to just max my Lodic at this point and just have it gone for a Hailstorm onto a Moongus. Because then it could just, like, 1v4. But we're also still in a pretty good spot right now. Um, I honestly think my opponent's only real chance of winning this game is hard switching a Moongus out this turn. Because they need to activate Weakness Policy if they want to win the game, in my opinion. So I don't mind covering for that and just going for a Snooze and a Muddy Water this turn, I think. Now the only other consideration was is to, like, recover this turn. But I don't really think I take that much damage from Mimikyu. Or instead of recover, actually, Coil. I think Coil is very interesting here. But I think the one way my opponent can come back into this game is if you get Calyrex in and have its Weakness Policy activated. Um, and then Dynamax it. Yep, so there's the switch. If this is Calyrex coming in, it should just be GG. Nice. As long as we don't miss Muddy Water. So that's exactly the one play they had to go for. And if we do, if we hit the Muddy Water, um, it's just a double KO. So, yeah. I just wanted to, you know, push the tempo. Oh, interesting. Okay, they actually go for Taunt. Okay. Well, Muddy Water should get the knockout here if we don't miss. So here's a neutral G-Max news. Ah, it was a crit. Okay, I'm pretty sure that doesn't KO without the crit. But now I don't even have to worry about missing Muddy Water. Now the game, I think, is just over even with that. Cool. So, yeah, I mean, the odds were in our favor here, right? If we just hit Muddy Water, 
then it's a knock knockout on, uh, for sure onto the Calyrex. But oh my gosh, this was so fun. <laughs> have you ever seen a G-Max Grimstar and a Milotic put in this much work? Because I certainly haven't. So it's part of the main reason I wanted to feature you know this team, and they put in a lot of work. It was even more frustrating because I felt like I could have just led my Lodic to like you know gain so much momentum, but uh, switching it down to a parting shot was so so good. And that's the thing when you use a Pokemon like my Lodic. You're, you have to think about every turn, or your opponents have to think about every turn, because if you just make one mistake, like the parting shot here, and you don't cover for it, it puts you in such a bad spot, right? So normally what people do to hedge against Milotic, for example, is lead Regieleki as well, right? So you can just Dynamax it, and so you can go like Instant Aleki, or Landers Aleki, for example. They don't have Landers here, but yeah, just giving some examples. Um, okay, there's still, I mean, yeah, there's just no way we lose at this point, right? So I'll just Starfall into Instant, and then go for an Icy Wind. I see win in itself should KO Amoongus at this point. Yeah. <laughs> that was so fun. Um, I think my opponent just really didn't have too many options as soon as we set up the terrain. Um, that's the beauty of, you know, using this set too, where, like, people just don't expect Grimstar to max in that position. Um, and maybe if you're going for Taunt there was interesting. Uh, it's not what I was expecting, but worked out even better for us. I guess they just didn't want Milotic to set up, but I feel like at that point, Taunt doesn't really get you anywhere because Milotic already has all these increased stages of special attack. But it would have punished me if I actually tried to go for a recover that turn, right? So uh, that's why I wanted to just go for Muddy Water, where it was like, it gets the knockout onto Mimikyu in that range. It knocks anything switching in uh, with the G-Max News in combination. Uh, Amoongus there, I guess, could protect, and then Mimikyu could try to Trick Room. Maybe that was one possible play they could have made, but yeah. Um, the fact they didn't Trick Room sooner made things a lot easier, and at the end of the day, the Grim plus Milo combo was just so awesome. So... I'm very, very pleased about that one, and uh, let's just keep it going. Second match here, and wow, it is just like the same arc. Like, <laughs> this is so interesting. Like, I know this is a strong team comp. Um, this one's a little bit different. They have uh, the Porygon and the Feeny rather than, you know, the Among Us, but still. Okay. Huh. I mean, Aleki is still what scares me the most. In that last one, I went with Grimstar on Instant with the idea of, like, setting up a light screen. Still think that's okay. Porygon Aleki, I think, is a pretty effective lead by them. I'm fine with Grim Instant again, I think, and then Zashi and plus Milo. Landers, I think, can be quite strong here. I don't love Zapdos. Actually... I don't know, in a best of one, I don't love Zapdos because I just don't know what, like, Dynamax my opponent's going to commit to, right? Like, for example, in that previous game, I was worried about my opponent bringing Regieleki and Dynamaxing it in the beginning of the game. They didn't even bring it, right? So, I don't want to over-index and try to cover for something too hard just for my opponent to not even bring it at all. That's just, in best of one, it's, like, a little bit riskier to, like, fully expect one strategy. So, you typically want to just, like, hedge your bets, right? And bring something that generally has an okay matchup against everything rather than, like, a hard win against one thing and then, like, a hard loss against another. So, yeah, it is going to be a Lucky plus Calyrex. So, I mean, the nice thing here is I do get an in, in Intimidate off, right? Um, so that's already a good start. Uh, turn 1 is very interesting immediately because I think here a Lucky probably does commit the Dynamax. So what I can do is Max as well. And I could also Light Screen with the Grim Snarl. Because hmm. if I can stall out their Dynamax and weather the Storm... They also don't have Mimikyu, which is interesting. So it's like, I also wonder if this is actually Weakness Policy Calyrex. But like, I don't mind light screening, I think. I honestly want to just go for a light screen and a flare blitz onto this. I don't feel a major need to fake out Calyrex here. So there's Dynamax, yeah. I, I think Galecki plus um, Calyrex. Like, this is the lead I lost to, I like I mentioned when I was practicing. And that's what I was actually expecting to see in the previous game so we do get to go up against it now the first time i tried to go up against it i went with mm, zashian plus my Lodic, and then my zashian just got one shot by max lightning on turn one so i was like okay that probably doesn't work um so setting up light screen here is valuable i could have clicked fake out into calyrex but calyrex is at minus one so it doesn't really scare me that much they're gonna lightning grim okay that works nice Oh, we survived, but you know what the issue is? They're just going to KO us now with the Glacial Lance, meaning they get an attack boost as well, which I guess I don't love. Yeah, so they're Life Orb. Oh, interesting. They're faster here as well. Okay. Hmm. Well, I don't really regret this turn. Uh, seeing them target Grim there is, an interest is, is quite interesting, I'd say. Um... 
Huh. Them being faster with Calyrex is actually a pretty big issue in my opinion. Like he also took that a lot better than I expected it to, wow. This still doesn't feel good. <laughs> I don't even have my berry intact on Incineroar. Man, them being faster actually changes everything. Um, that's really interesting. We set up light screen, so it's a question of whether or not Zacian can survive a max lightning under light screen, is what I'm thinking here. What I also could do is like bring out Zacian and then protect the Zacian. Do I max Incin right now? I feel like I should. If I max Incin though, they just max lightning it. That's really bad, isn't it? Uh, I don't even think Zacian is... Like, I don't know what the odds of it surviving are here, but I don't think it's guaranteed that it does survive, and that in itself is concerning, right? If I'm my opponent, though, what would I do? I would Lightning into Zacian. So I could take a big risk here. I might need to. I'm pretty behind in this game right now. Hmm... I don't know how I feel about this, but I, I don't have a safe play to make here. That's a great switch. That's going to Ensign. Yeah, all done. That's a game-winning play by them. So yeah, this is like the polar opposite of the last game, and that means my game plan isn't even good. I think it means I just have to bring Landorus into Lemix then. Uh, they go for Lightning on Zacian. Oh, Zacian does survive that. Okay. I also meant... I was like trying to Dynamax with Ensign, but I guess I actually timed out. So that may have actually worked in our favor, hilariously enough. Um, so I'll take it. I just, yeah, like, I, I don't think it's a guaranteed survival on Zacian's end here. Um, yeah, that timeout actually works in our favor, funnily enough. Because I don't think a minus one max flare would have knocked out the Aleki there. Uh, so now I get to bring in my Lodic. Okay, this is still winnable, I think. I just have to play this very carefully. Um... <sighs> Now you're at minus one. Light screen is up. Electric crane, however, is also up. I'm thinking we just switch into Incineroar here now. I gotta max my Lodic in this game. I mean, it should be a max guard, right? Okay, yeah, I'm fine with the max card here. I, I really wanted a geyser, but I just don't think I can risk taking a max lightning here. Um, so, even if they like double up into the instant slot, so be it. At least I get Zashin and I can protect the Zashin the next turn. I don't know, it was really tempting to click geyser, because I think I would survive, you know, with them being at minus one and with light screen being up, but it's still just so much damage. Oh, you know what, though? They might just have Rising Voltage. And if they do, then this doesn't even get us anywhere. So, yeah. Maybe it was better to just click Geyser here. Especially because we could have Geysered into Incineroar. Well, actually, I think I'd rather just target a Lucky always. But, okay, there's Max Guard. Fake out. Yep. So that, that's expected. There's actually... <laughs> I was going to say it's nice because it activates our Citrus, but then the HP bar moves so slowly that I wasn't sure. Uh, a double up here until the Zashi slot would also make a lot of sense, but they did not go for that. Okay, so this end ends up being the best possible outcome, I'd say. Um, I'm just nervous about Rising Voltage, but even if you have it, like, so be it. Still two turns of terrain left, as well as two turns of Light Screen. I mean, I don't really care about Incineroar right now. It doesn't scare me very much. So, I feel like Aleki protecting here is fairly obvious, but there's not much else for me to go for right now because, like, Incin parting shotting honestly works in our favor because it means you have to bring that back in at some point. But they're going to switch Aleki out, okay? You know, Porygon. That makes sense. Um, Yeah, they played Aleki super, super well in this game. And I also didn't expect their Calyrex to be faster than my Incin. Not that that really changed too much, but... 
it definitely threw me off. Um, okay. yeah, that's fantastic damage, right? But like, where does it really get us is the question. What does instant do here is interesting. Hmm, okay, they are parting shot. Uh, I don't think I can really handle late game Aleki very well. It's just so hard to feel confident bringing Lander's T into this matchup because they have Porygon, Tapu Fini, and Calyrex Ice Rider. So this is an exact example of what I was talking about relative to the previous game, right? Where it's like, yeah, if I was confident my opponent bringing Aleki, then yeah, like, I would play towards Lander's. But if they don't, then it's not a very useful bring for us. Okay, Calyrex comes in. Now we know their Calyrex is faster, which is part of the problem. Can Geyser to knock out Porygon? Yeah, I think I'm gonna party shot here and Geyser to KO Porygon here. The good thing at least is Electri Electric Terrain runs out, but I think Oleki just with Life Orb is too powerful here. If I were to play a best of three against my opponent here, what would I have done? lead Grimmsnarl plus Landorus. I think that's pretty interesting because then you have to really think twice about Dynamaxing Regieleki on turn one. Incineleki. Or sorry, Incine Landorus. The, the problem is like how good are those leads against like the non-Aleki combinations on my opponent's team, right? They just high horsepower. Wow, that just gets the one hit KO. And they're faster than my Lodic, so this is not a slow Calyrex, which is very interesting. But now they should just win the game with um, Regieleki. Maybe I should have ma uh, attacked with my Lodic the turn that they went for Max Lightning. Like, we would have taken so much damage, but we needed to get the knockout onto Aleki there. Whereas now they get to conserve it, right? And had we actually knocked out Aleki earlier, even if my Lodic had, like, you know, 5 HP, that's more that's more than enough, because we have Zacian and uh, Milo. But now they can just bring out Aleki. I'm trying to think if there's any way in which we win, including, like, a Thunderbolt or Electroweb miss. That's really our only bet, I think. Um, I guess they don't know that I don't have Protect. That's the other interesting thing right now. Because if I had Protect, what I could do is Protect with the Milotic, right? And just try to knock out the Regieleki. I don't, so I only have one play to make here, which is uh, Protect and Muddy Water. But they don't know that I don't know that. Wait, they don't know that I don't know that. Uh, they don't know that I don't have Protect. <laughs> I assume it's just a T-Ball. Oh, they do go for Electro- wait. That also gives us a special attack boost. Uh, I think High Horsepower gets the knockout. So we need a miss. So this was them, like, kind of hedging their options. Uh, but we actually win if they miss, but they don't miss. Okay. I assume that knocks us out. That was close. Okay, I don't feel too bad about this one. Um... Pretty tricky that matchup to maneuver around. And I think the Porygon and Phoenix team preview made it even made me even more scared. Also, yeah, this Calyrex being as fast as it is is very interesting. Um, I guess I could have sacrificed the Zashian last turn, but I think it was fine to play out this endgame the way it did. I the early game just didn't go as well as I would have liked, right? Because like I still ended up fainting to a Max Lightning and the Glacial Lands. Um, I guess part of me was probably hoping for them to lightning the instant slot rather than the Grimmsnarl slot. And the fact they, you know, managed to get the Grim was really good. So, yeah. We played this archetype so much in the last two days, right? Like, it's like the fourth time we played against the Calyrex stuff. Uh, with, you know, like, Aleki on all of the teams as well. So, you know, this is a very different one from how that first one played out. But glad we can feature, like, how, you know, both ends of the matchup can kind of play. Because this was what I was kind of expecting in the first game. So, if, you know, I were to play against this combo again, like, I, I need to think of how I fit Landers in safely. So, I gotta give that some thought. But... That was another fun one, so let's look for one final game. There's no way. Okay, I thought this was the... Um, <laughs> I recognized the trainer name, and I thought it was the same player uh, from the first game, but I'd actually run into this player on the ladder also while I was practicing. And uh, yeah, I just don't think there are that many people you know, playing the ladder right now, which makes sense. It's the end of the season. Brand new uh, game, uh, Pokemon games came out as well. So yeah. <laughs> Anyway, when I played against this player earlier, I ended up leading Zapdos, and Zapdos was just super good against their entire team. They let, went with Venusaur and Landers as a combo, and it was Koba Berry on the Venusaur, um, and Life Orb Protect. Sorry, not Life Orb on the Landers, I don't think I saw that, I just knew it had Protect. 
Mm, Zapdos is super good against their team. I think they might try to play towards Dusclops this time around. My Lodic is Coil. Just pretty nice. I can see them going Dusclops Venusaur, I think. That's what I would probably consider in their shoes. So, I think I'm going to go with Zapdos plus Zacian, Milotic, and probably Ensign. It's just good damage here. I don't really need Light Scream. I don't think Bulk Up is that cool here. Yeah, I'll go with Ensign. So, this is interesting. Uh, yeah, I... I think Dusclops is primarily scary here. Du like, Venusaur on that team is also interesting, by the way, right? Because they don't have a clear Sun Activator. There's no, like, Groudon or Torkoal, for example. And so the lack of those means, like, like it's harder to just enable Venusaur immediately. Yeah, it's Venu Dusclops. Cool. I, I don't know if this is really the best lead into it, though. Like, I expected this, but it's not even like this is incredible. Um, I just think there's no way you can max Venusaur turn one. How much special attack investment does this Zapdos have? I'm just double checking. It's only four special attack EVs. Not very much is the answer. And then Zacian here has 92 attack. Cause like, what I'm thinking is, hey, we can just like double up onto, you know, I'd rather just Eerie Impulse here, honestly, on a Venusaur and substitute. I think I like that more. I'm, I'm not gonna try to double up onto something and pick up a knockout. Yeah, like Venusaur can't really realistically stay in here. So instant coming in makes a lot of sense, but that's fine. I reveal Eerie Impulse, but that's also fine, right? I wasn't going to get the knockout onto Dusclops anyway. What my opponent's trying to do right now is stall out the early game. So that... It's, it's stall out my Dynamax. So that's exactly what we don't want to do, right? Let my opponent just stall out the Dynamax for free. But I think that turn it could have been interesting to click like Hurricane and Sacred Sword into the Venusaur slot. Would have just demolished Incineroar, right? And that would have put us in a pretty good position. I was looking to switch that into my Lodic there, I guess. I can still do that. <laughs> the interesting thing here is now, do, does my opponent risk any parting shots? Um, if I'm my opponent, I would actually consider Nightshade and Flare Blitz into this slot. Um, I don't mind switching an Ensign right now and protecting this turn. It is rather tempting to get my Lodic in and try to get a competitive boost with it, but I think it's easier said than done. So, yeah, I'd rather just get an Intimidate onto them, stall out a turn of Trick Room, and then next turn I have Fake Out Pressure, right? So then I can Fake Out and Sacred Sword, Fake Out Behemoth Blade if I want to read into Instant Switching Out. Maybe I'll find to attack here because we just survived the Flare Blitz anyway. I don't know. Yep, there's Nightshade. And Flare Blitz. Cool. Okay, that works out well. Um... I mean, honestly, the main thing I'm worried about right now, also one fun thing we could do in this game is that, hold on, this is actually very interesting. The only issue with this is if they have ally switch and they just ally switch us this turn. But they, they're gonna have Zacian and Venusaur in the back and with this many turns of Trick Room left, I actually like this idea. Maybe I just don't need to go for it this turn. But I'm down. I'm down. I'm going to Knuckle, and I'm going to Sacred Sword here. And they stay in. Could be a parting shot into Arzashian, but... The idea here is... If they stay in with Ensign here... I feel like they probably parting shot because they're intimidated. But either way, like... If they stay in Ensign, this just accelerates the game so, so, so quickly for us. Let's see. No ally switch. That is fantastic. And given that they're going for Nightshade, I really feel like it's Nightshade plus Flare Blitz, to which we should survive because of the attack drop and because we're max HP on Zacian. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine. Even if we just survive with one HP, that's all I need here. Perfect. Okay, nice. Now we're in business because we should get the knockout onto the Incinera. And more importantly, now I'm comboing these attack boosts with my Pokemon. 
this turn was just a big turn because I was really nervous about ally switch, but I think like this was a really interesting turn where like you find an unconventional Dynamax opportunity. Sweet. And I, I, I felt fairly confident surviving that uh, turn just because this is max HP Zacian, it's not like no bulk Zacian, so I'd have been very surprised if we got knocked out there. But this now puts us in a really interesting spot, right? Because they bring out Venusaur, but plus one max Flare might just KO that. You know, the other interesting thing is if I max for it sets up the sun, putting Venusaur in even more awkward of a spot. Um, I should probably switch out Zacian. Like, the attack boost is fun, but I don't think we get that much value out of it. So, yeah, I'm going to flare into Venusaur here, and I'm going to switch Zacian out into, I think, Zapdos. I like that. It would have been so sick if we had over 50 HP, because then we could have just gone um, flare into Behemoth Blade. To let Venusaur outspeed us. Yeah, so they're gonna max Venu here, but that's fine. Now the thing is, even if you have ally switch, at least I get a guaranteed plus one max flare into something. That in itself is pretty strong. And uh, Zapdos walls Venusaur here quite nicely. And I can roost with it as well. And Eerie Impulse Venu this next turn. So then they'd probably feel compelled to go for a max guard this next turn. I wonder if there's just one shots. I wouldn't think so. We don't have attack investment, but. That was so close. Also, uh, that was a very interesting play by them. You'll notice that Dusclops there is actually uh, did not go for Nightshade. That means they're clicking Trick Room this turn. Ooh, that's actually a really nice play. Because if I stayed in with Zashi in there, I think we would have won the game this turn. And the issue is that I took way too much damage with Zapdos. I actually think it may have been worth it to sacrifice my Lodic there instead. Hmm. Okay. Um, do you have max ooze is the question. I mean, even if you do, it's fine. I don't mind just flaring here and roosting, I think. Because I could see Venu going for a max guard, but if you max guard, I just heal all the way back up, and that's very nice. And then with the recovery, even if you nightshade... Well, nightshade into Vine Lash might just put me around the same HP. I think I have a little bit more, but I'm not 100% sure about that. Uh, if we just had a little bit more attack investment on instant or if Venu had a little bit less bulk, we would have just gotten that one hit KO and that would have just won us the game, but it was close. It was a fun game either way. Um, but yeah, I think I think um, it would have been smarter for me. Oh, wow. It's, uh... It's not Chlorophyll Venusaur? I mean, it makes sense, right? Because they don't have any sun on their team. That is fascinating. Wow. I did not. I didn't see that coming. Uh, okay. <laughs> I didn't think about that at all. And so th then their play last turn makes even more sense, right? Because the idea was to know that they would always KO Zacian even if I flared them. Huh. Very fascinating. What are all of Venusaur's abilities again? It's been like so long since I haven't seen a Chlorophyll Venusaur. Uh, it's Overgrow. Hmm. Wow. That is so interesting. That is honestly so interesting. Um, okay, so they bring out Zacian. Dynamax ends now. It's 4-2 in my favor, but my, this is still 5 from over. Like, Zacian could absolutely pull off a comeback right now, right? Um... I think here I'm fine switching Incineroar out into my Lodic. Because if we get a single Icy Wind off in this game, that's really valuable. Uh, like, I'm mainly worried about them coming back with Swords Dance right now. So I want to cover for them Swords Dancing this turn. I think Roosting here is fine. If you knock out Zapdos, that's fine. If you target Incident and, like, Sacred Sword, that's fine, because then Zapdos heals all the way back up, and Zapdos is... You know what? I actually think it's worth it. Oh. Helping hand. Okay, I mean, at least it means it's not Swords Dance. Hmm, um... play rough. It's a very good play. Wow, yeah, I think it may have been worth it to actually sacrifice our Zacian. Uh, helping hand actually changes the dynamic of this completely. That was a fantastic play by them. 
So I can bring an Incineroar now. That gives me an Intimidate. That in itself is obviously pretty good. Um, but Intimidate only goes so far when you have Helping Hand support. Right right now, like my opponent... Well, I guess this next turn is interesting. Um, last turn of Vine Lash, two turns of Sunlight. You could just like Helping Hand play Rough Zapdos, but... Like I want to fake out... Zacian and Roost here. I'm also nervous about my late game damage I'll put in a Dust Collapse. What have we seen from it so far? Nightshade, Trick Room, Helping Hand. Could be Pain Split, but then Zapdos should theoretically win the 1v1 against it. Ah, uh, this turn is big. It's like, do you protect? I think um, I, I went for the switch on the Roost because I feel like Zacian is going to be compelled to protect, but I think it may have been better actually to just have clicked Fake Out anyway, just to guarantee that it doesn't attack. The issue is that my Zacian is in max speed here, so I'm assuming they outspeed me right now. Okay, but they do protect. That's very good. That's very good. And now it's like I don't... Even if my Zacian faints from a Nightshade, like it's okay. I just I want to know what Dusclops' last attack is here. There's Nightshade. Okay, yeah, they're gonna knock out Zacian. Uh, I just, um, I didn't think Milo would ever get one shot earlier. Because I was expecting, fully expecting a fighting type attack. So not only was I not expecting play rough, even if it is just play rough, we should survive. But they had play rough plus the, uh, play rough plus the helping hand, which was the main issue for us. Well, now you're at minus one attack. I think here I'm just going to go for Fake Out onto Zacian and Thunderbolt. Like, essentially, I think Zapdos can win the 1v1 against Dusclops if it comes to that. So I, that's what I'm trying to force right now. Um, oh, wow. They went all in here. They didn't even bother going for Nightshade. Okay, cool. Yeah, I have no reason not to click Fake Out this turn, in my opinion. Um... So they flinch. I don't know if Zapdos is a, is a 2 at KO, though, with Thunderbolt. Oh my gosh, it is not. That's a problem, but I think it might still be okay. I will Flare Blitz and T-Bolt here. They, they could obviously go for a Protect and then a Nightshade. But I don't have a great way around it. Because I it's not like Roosting really saves me much anyway, but yeah, that's by far their best play. The question then is, do you pick up a knockout onto us the next turn with your helping hand play? Oh, it's Haze. Okay, I think that allows, unless, well, if you go for a fighting type attack, like, yeah, I'm just going to Flare Blitz and T-Bolt again. Haha, <laughs> they, they conceal that all the way until the end, that's very cool. So then even if I had Milo with IC Wind and Coil, it actually wouldn't have helped that much. Okay. Oh, they target Instant here. Yep, that makes sense. Because you don't want to... You need to get the knockout onto and You also don't want to lower your defense and special defense. Another Thunderbolt should get the knockout. That's a huge para, though, because now we should just have speed, right? Wow. Yeah, that's a that's an absolutely huge paralysis. Like, um, I think we still could have... Uh, it depends on whether or not we would have survived a uh, helping hand play rough. Oh, I guess they can just pr uh, protect Trick Room now, right? So now they... Yeah. Okay, you know, I, I'm glad that that's what the end game boils down to, because otherwise I feel like the para would have just stolen a game that otherwise my opponent should have won. So now we get to find out. But, like, the thing is now they have to attack through the paralysis as well and connect with the play rough. But the thing is, with Trick Room up now... It does buy you a turn as well. Oh, interesting. They just Nightshade rather than Helping Hand. Okay, so because they don't want to go all in here, which makes sense. And unfortunately, they get paralyzed. Wow. I mean, that was definitely lucky. Because um, I'm pretty sure Play Rough would have put us in another Nightshade KO range, but now we just win the game. Um, yeah, it was... All of these, like, small texts, right, like, really added up. Them having Play Rough, them having Haze, them having Helping Hand. Um, the thing is, now we know Dusclops doesn't have recovery, so I can just keep roosting. Um, yeah. 
So that paralysis was absolutely game changing. I gotta think about how I can play this end game better. Cause I'm, I don't know, like it was really tricky. Uh, actually, I don't know if we want to roost it if we're not getting max value out of it. Cause we, we know we can obviously survive two turns right now. So yeah, I'm actually just gonna click Thunderbolt. I mean, the main thing is the Venu not getting one shot. I, I think I shouldn't have given up my Lodic the way I did. Although since they had Haze, like uh, Icy Wind or Coil honestly wouldn't have even done much for us, interestingly enough. Uh, anyway, there's really no, like, the thing is in this endgame, we know exactly how much damage Duskops is going to do to us with Nightshade, right? We know it's moveset. It's Nightshade, Haze, Trick Room, uh, Helping Hand. So there's no, obviously no other, like, damage. And it also can't heal because it doesn't have a pain split. Yeah, so Trick Room expires. Uh... Yeah, I mean, there's, it's fine if I'm, I guess we should just roost. Like, <laughs> might as well. Better, better safe than sorry. Although there's, like, we know, it, you know, Nightshade is only going to do increments of 50 anyway. Um, I don't think they can really win off timer here either. So, yeah. I just, uh, I'm trying to think how I could have, like, conserved uh, and had a better time against this late game Zacian that they had. Because this Dusk of Zacian combination was absolutely nasty. And it's mainly because of Helping Hand, right? Because it just, like, negates the Intimidate that I otherwise have. But, yeah, there's no way Dusclops can win this game without healing. So, we're just going to play it out, but it should be game over. Yeah, I think without the Paralysis, we just lose. Uh, they could still misplay a rough, right? So, like, in the end game, my opponent needed to avoid a bunch of, like, small 10% chances, right? Like, they need to avoid one para out of multiple Thunderbolts. They also need to avoid like, uh, one miss, right? Because they could have missed either the um, Incineroar or the Zapdos would play rough. But the odds are still substantially in their favor, I would argue. So, yeah. All we need to make sure is we don't choke this game. <laughs> make sure we roost when we are about to be in KO range. But I can respect them for playing it out because, you know, your opponents can always choke in an endgame scenario like this. So, yeah. But the good thing is we know exactly how much HP we have. So, yeah, this single roost should now just win us the game because they're going to need three more Nightshades to win at this point. So, what a doozy of a battle. It's just such a shame we didn't one-shot the uh, Venusaur, because that's what I was playing towards. If we get the one-hit KO there, I think, like, yeah, we just win the game. Them not being Chlorophyll was pretty interesting. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think how else I could have played this endgame against uh, this Zacian plus Dusclops combo, because, like, obviously we had the numbers advantage, but, like, I don't feel like there were any major opportunities to make, like, good predictions. Like, my opponent was just making safe plays. Um... I think the one turn I can think of was, yeah, sacrificing Zacian so that my Lodic doesn't just get one shot. Then I bring in Incin for an Intimidate. Then I can fake out and then maybe switch into Milo. But I don't know. That was such an interesting set of games today. So we ended up maxing a lot of interesting things, right? We maxed the, the Grimstar in game one, Milo in this one, and then um, the Zapdos in this one. Or sorry, the Incin in this one. So uh, this team that generally I think is just really cool. Um, I feel like I could have gotten more value out of Zashkin in this last game. But yeah, it was honestly just such a you know, kind of uh, doozy. But uh, that's going to be it for this one. So thanks so much as, as always for watching. If you enjoyed, please show support by leaving a like. I'd really appreciate it. Don't forget to check out Into the AM today and take advantage of some of the deals that they have. And I'll see you all soon. All right. Peace.